Hey there, welcome to episode 76 of Wise Advice Live. Um, here we are. So we're live on Facebook. Hopefully Facebook is notifying you at this point. It takes about a couple seconds, it seems like, for the room to kind of fill up, so I'll kind of give you the time to get here. But uh, we're going to go right into episode 76. We'll do it like we always do. Susan's here. Yahoo! Good to see you. Welcome to episode 76. Aaron's here. Good evening. Jeff is here. Good evening, Jeff. Good to see you. Katie's out walking, I'm sure. Hey, yeah. Uh, Kate, are you, Kate, Katie, you're not Eastern time zone, I take it. You're probably West Coast somewhere. Catherine made it. Hello. Because it's, um, it's the East Coast time. It is, what, 10, 11 o'clock, so... Um, that'd be my guess. So, Diane, hello. Good good evening. Good to see you. Paula, hello. Rebecca says hello. Hi. Good to see all of you. Hope your evening is going well. Um, let's see who else is going to pop in here. We'll give you a second. Janet. Hi, Janet. Good evening to you. Ruth Ann. Ruth Ann, how are you? Sheila, hello. Yeah, so so Washington, so it's eleven, so it's eight p.m. Right, eight p.m. or seven p.m. I think you're four hours. So so that makes more sense while you're out walking. So Beth, good evening. Uh, Rebecca, yep, it's exciting. You know, I, you know, it's funny. I I laugh. I think um, catching it live is cool. I guess, um, but it's the same audio if you catch it as a replay. So eight p.m. in Katie's time zone. So sporting the Chick Fil A shirt tonight. That's um, that's this is I forgot all about this shirt. This is um, so I mean, hang on, we'll get to that. I'll get to that during the show. Uh, Jeff is day one of your attendance goal was a success. Great job, Jeff. What's the attendance goal, Jeff? Just working on uh, activity, I presume. Bonnie says hello from South Carolina. I was uh, I was born in South Carolina, Bonnie. Just coincidentally, Rebecca. How cool is that? 75 pounds. You don't lose 75 pounds by accident, right? So, so the cow hat, I forgot I gave it away when I came home last night. So I gave my daughter was here with her boyfriend, and I gave him the hat. And so he took it. Um, so I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Jeff's weight training, cool. Hola, Nitha, right? I'm gonna, it's going to take me a second to get that one always. Um... Yeah, so um, so Rebecca's you know lost seventy five pounds. Good work. You don't want to refine it, right? That's one of those things you give away on purpose. We don't lose them. We give them away. We release them. We um, we something other than uh, lose it. Because everything I've lost in my life, I've wanted to get back. So. All right, you ready to do the show? I'm ready. A little bit of headphone action, got the water going. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Uh, Sharon and listens every day in the car, thank you. Very cool. Um... So Nitha, Nitha, Nithy, <laughs> I'm so sorry, like the name Nick, which is, drop the CK, so Ni, the, Nitha, how am I doing, right? I am terrible with names, and I apologize. Uh, Kathleen says, hello from Auburn, Alabama, wife of the United States Air Force, chief retired, very cool. Uh, congrats to the chief, for sure. Uh, and then hello from Auburn, Alabama. War Eagles, right? So I am, if I had to pick, I'm going to go with the folks who aren't in Auburn. So Roll Tide. We'll go with Roll Tide on that one. But, uh, but hey, chief, congrats on your service. So cool. Yeah, love my Red Sox hat. Go Red Sox. All right, all right. So Nitha, 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 Nitha. Marianne says hi. 
All right, here we go. Let's roll into the show. Enough of that. Let's get let's get rolling. We got episode seventy six coming up. I uh, got a handful of things to talk about. The common theme is well, we're gonna start with do you eat your weeklies? Fort Wayne. Whoop whoop. Um, well, you'll see what the common theme is. Let's just see. Um, yeah. Yeah, ha yeah, happily retired school, and yeah, roll tide. I mean, I'm not from Alabama. My um, my aunt, not my aunt, lives in Birmingham, uh, in Tuscaloosa area. So, um, so yeah, so I, I just kind of every when I was a kid, that's all they sent me was roll tide stuff. So that's the only thing I knew. But I understand the War Eagles. All right, born in Fort Wayne. So, all right, here we go. We got uh, audio check one two testing one. Let's get the roll tape here. Why we do that? Mic check one two, testing one two. All right, sound looks good. Uh, let's see, Crystal was New Smyrna Beach checking in. Good evening, Adriana. Good evening. Here we go. We're gonna roll. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember... When you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, here we are. Welcome to episode 76 of Wise Advice. And uh, I'll open the show right up with Karen. Karen comes in and says, thank you for this wonderful podcast. It's my daily dose of Weight Watchers. Question, what do you do with your weeklies? If you want to lose, do you eat them? How many can you lose if you eat your weeklies? Well, Karen, I'll answer that with, uh, it depends. Uh, you're absolutely encouraged to eat your weeklies. You're encouraged to figure out on your own plan what you need to do to be successful. The weeklies are there to be eaten. Uh, it's part of the program. It's factored in that we don't give you them. You know, Weight Watchers does not give you weeklies so that they can sit there in your tracker and, and not be used. So... I would encourage you to absolutely eat them. You need to figure out what your body needs. Your body needs fuel to work properly. So what I did with my weeklies is there were weeks that I ate them. There were weeks that I didn't eat them. Generally, I reserved them for times when I was, when I was hungry or for a special occasion. I didn't eat them just for the sake of eating them. I didn't go out and say, you know, hey, at the end of the day, I have 42 weeklies left over. I'm going to go grab a bag of M&Ms and a piece of chocolate cake. And I'm going to eat that, you know, eat those in that fashion. When I was when I was dug into my weeklies, I knew that at that point it was more than what I needed for the day. So I wanted to make a very smart choice with it. I wanted to make sure whatever I was using my weeklies for was something that I really wanted, something that I'd really chosen, and something that I was mindful of. So, like I said, there were times when absolutely I went all the way through my weeklies, ate every single one of them. There were times that I didn't, but I was mindful to eating them through the entire process. So what I want you to do, Karen, is I want you, I want you to experiment. I do want you to eat them. I want you to work them into your plan. I want you to stay mindful to the blue dot process, right? You can eat up to seven weeklies per day and still get a blue dot, but you can't go negative in your weekly, so you still have to kind of mind that. You know, if you eat seven weeklies a day, you know, it'll t take seven times seven is 49, so you can overeat and still get a blue dot if you eat seven weeklies a day. So at some point, you can't eat seven every single day. So you have to kind of make sure you don't go negative in your weeklies, but you can eat them. And so just make smart choices with them. That is the learning part of this process. That's the flexibility that the program gives you where you can kind of work them into your journey and figure out what it is you need. But they're absolutely there for you to be, to be used. So go ahead and give them a shot. So... Uh, Ronnie writes in and says, I wrote you a while back about being derailed due to the illness and death of my mother. 
You were very supportive. I then took a trip to see my son in Europe. I tried walking as much as possible to help balance out the calories that come with eating all meals out and the sauces and temptations. I said no to those morning croissants. When I returned, the scale showed a seven pound gain from my lowest Weight Watchers weight thus far. I am back on the program. I am mad at myself for all my bad choices, but mindful that I made some good choices to keep the damage at seven pounds. The battle continues. To use a military analogy, I lost this battle, but I haven't lost the war. I am finally at a point with Weight Watchers that I accept the life that life happens, and I just have to start again. Normally, I would sabotage myself and quit at this point, putting all of the weight back on. So the best non-scale victory for me right now is not letting some mistakes cloud my real goal. I have to learn to deal with those food challenges no matter what form they come in. It is ironic that while I see the consequences of my poor choices in how my clothes fit and the scale, I still receive compliments from people who haven't seen me in a while. I am so excited to get these last seven pounds off and more. Thank you for all of your inspiration, uh, Ronnie. Well, let's open up, um, you know, I remember your email about your mother and, and uh, again, you know, my heart continues to pour out for you in that. And so, so here you are, you're, you're working a new normal, you know, something, your life has completely changed. And so now you're readjusting to this new life. So you have to forgive yourself for that instantly. Uh, the term do your best certainly changes as your life goes on and as circumstances come up. So your best now is different than your best before and you continue to work it. Now, there's a huge win. When you said no to the croissant, you know, that to me shows the mindfulness of where you are in your journey. So we're going to talk a little later about, you know, whether or not you need to be perfect on the plan or not perfect on the plan. Uh, but you are at a point right now where you're mindfully engaged into the process. That is a huge win in this, in this journey. The fact that you are interested in what's going on in the journey is the success. Now here we go with you know the, one of the common things, and I'm not going to dig too deep on you. I'm not going to pick on you you know too hard, but I but I got to a little bit. Uh, a lot of us, and, and it's not you specifically, it, it's all of us. But we take a trip, we go somewhere, we go on vacation, and we make the assumption that we can we're going to walk more. We're going to spend so much time walking that it gives us a free pass to overeat. And you think about it, you know, and so you think about this trip, and I don't know what your numbers were for the trip, but but a typical day. You know, when, when, I, when I was in Disney, you know, a typical day for me was 15 to 17,000 steps a day, which is far above what I average when I'm home. So if I used that 17,000 steps, if you convert those to fit points, it's roughly 15 to 17 fit points. So here's what we're doing. We're going on a vacation. We're walking 15,000 steps, let's say. We're earning 15 fit points, let's say. We're eating 50, 60, 70 points worth of food, and we're thinking that because we're walking, we're making a difference. Well, we're still overeating. So when you go on your trip and, and you know, walking as much as possible is absolutely key. You've got to do that while you're on your journey, but you, but you track those as fit points and then keep a mindfulness of what it is you're still eating. So that shows up why you had the seven pound gain. It makes perfectly sense. You know, the chances are that you overate those weeks but what's absolutely critical is that you came right back. You got back on program. I, I don't like the fact uh, that we say, you know, you got mad at yourself for all the bad choices because you did make some good choices. But, but the, the fact that you get mad at yourself is not a healthy mindset. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to understand where we are in the journey. We need to understand that we can't be perfect on the plan, that life is always going to happen. We are completely in control um, and you didn't lose any battle. You know, you, you're still mindful to the process. So to say that you lost the battle and you haven't lost the war, I, I understand where you're headed with that. I really do. But you didn't lose anything. You're continuing in. The fact that you even wrote in at this point continues to remind me that you're working the plan. You're doing the best that you can under the current set of circumstances, and you're doing good. So when you say your best non-scale victory is not letting some mistakes cloud your real goal... I don't call them mistakes. I call them opportunities to learn. So here's what you learned. You learned that when you go on vacation and you walk a little more and you still don't track is that the scale will react negatively. 
great, we learned that. The next trip we go on, we say, okay, let me look at this. Let me see what's going to happen because all of these food challenges you have to deal with, they will be here for the rest of your life. They absolutely will. Now to close out your email, uh, I love the end of it. And this is the piece you need to focus on. You said it's ironic that while you see the consequences of your poor choices, people who haven't seen you in a while, well, they see your trend line. And that's where we focus. We focus all of our energy on the trend line. And your trend line clearly is headed in the right direction or else people wouldn't notice. So they're looking at the trend line. They're seeing all the success that you're having. And you're not seeing it the way they're seeing it. Here's where you need to do. You need to focus the same way they're focused. You need to see what they see. You need to celebrate what they're celebrating and get the goal. Congratulations, Ronnie. Thank you. Next up, Kim from Ohio writes in and says, Hi, Fat Dag. Uh, I've been on Weight Watchers since April 23rd, and I've lost 15 pounds and counting. I have about 30 to 35 to lose, and the quick results I have seen by staying on plan have really helped snowball my motivation. I love how I don't feel deprived on Weight Watchers, and I'm able to eat anything in moderation. It really seems sustainable long term. I want to write in a comment prompted by the podcast about online only, only accountability uh, and tell you my story. My joining story is that I tried to put on a pair of old work jeans to go out and do some yard work. They didn't go halfway up my thighs. That, coupled with the fact that I had recently seen family and I, that I hadn't seen in a long time, and I felt like I got some looks, it drove me to jump on the scale for the first time in a long time. I weighed 25 pounds more than my wedding day almost two years ago exactly, and 35 pounds more than I did in 2011. When I distinctly remember going to the doctor and being pleased with the scale because it was such a weird feeling to be pleased with the scale. I'm looking forward to that feeling again. So I texted my coworker and this is where the online accountability story shout out begins. I work in a large hotel. We have a cafeteria here which gives employees free lunch. When I started my job here a year and a half ago, it was awesome, but I think it was part of my problem. As the lunches are large servings of high-fat meats and butter-laden starches every day. Basically, a full dinner-type meal that we would all eat every day because it was free. Since I started the plan, I've been bringing my lunch, and I think it's been an immense help. But the true help has been my coworker wingman. We have eight people here on Weight Watchers, so when I saw the scale and texted my coworker Jeff for help and advice, I knew what he was going to say. He encouraged me to join, and I'm so happy that I did. I am online only, and about five of the eight are online only as well, but our mutual interest in tracking points and holding each other accountable and giving encouragement is almost like having our own on-site meetings. It really helps with, with the accountability and the encouragement to have like-minded people around on a day-to-day -day basis. We comment on what we've seen on Connect, we share recipes, we share ideas, and we keep each other motivated. We all have different weigh-in days and we check in with each, with each other to see how things went. I appreciate your podcast as I've always been a podcast listener, so I've added you to my rotation. I like listening to yours during my morning walks. I know a few of my coworkers have listened as well. I think one, Jeff has already reached out to you a few times too. It's like you're a part of our group here and I hope you know how much impact you have. Keep up the great work and thanks for everything, Kim from Ohio. Well, Kim, uh, absolutely thank you for your email. Uh, you're right, You know, Weight Watchers is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. You can have whatever you want in moderation. That is the key and it really is sustainable long term. If you make the healthy lifestyle adjustments, you can sustain this program long term. So here's, here's where you go. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate your why. The fact that you wrote in and you understand what drove you to join is, uh, is huge. That will carry you to goal. You know why you joined. Putting on that pair of jeans is a feeling you don't ever want to feel again. You can remember hopping on the scale at a weight that you were pleased with the scale. A lot of us don't have that. You have a gift there. You understand what it's like to hop on the scale in a non-weight loss mode, hoping that, the, that you don't weigh any less than what you currently weigh. You understand that. You know what that feeling is like. 
that is such a gift for you in your journey that you, you, can, you can recognize when you get there. So you gotta stay focused. You can get there again. You've been there before. So you actually, you know, one of the things that was really interesting about your, e your email was, was your work scenario. Obviously you have a great support system at work. It's, it's really, really interesting to see eight people all in the same office. You've kind of formed your own meeting, which is amazing. You have a fantastic benefit of free lunch, but it's out of control. Uh, it's out of control in a sense where you, just because it's there and it's free, you, you, you kind of feel like you, you know, you're going to go after it. And so what you did is that you recognized it. You started bringing in your own lunch. And what we need to know is just because the food doesn't have a cost doesn't mean that it's free. It doesn't cost you money, but there is a cost for having that food available. Now, I would, I would venture to say that they would provide opportunities for you if you ask them for something a little healthier. Uh, I bet you you'd be able to, you'd be surprised. I bet you could find out what it is. And I think you could probably continue to eat there knowing what you know now, knowing what your why is. I bet you could make some modifications. Nonetheless, I'm very pleased to see that you've compensated by bringing your own lunch. That's the piece that's going to get you to goal. Now, I'm going to end your email with a piece that you didn't even mention, which I thought was interesting. Is you said you work in a large hotel. Now, I used to travel a lot. I traveled quite a bit. Uh, the larger the hotel, the larger the hotel gym is. So I'm pro pro pretty sure, right, if they offer you free lunch, they offer you a free gym membership as well. So get in there. Get in the 5 a.m. club. Get some workout done. Burn some activity. Use some fit points. Get your mind right. The activity will... will will continue to remind you what you're doing on this plan. It'll keep you going. And a huge shout out to the eight of you working together. You know, the hashtag better together certainly fits in this scenario. And I'm honored to walk with you guys and get this done. So keep up the great work. Next up, uh, Jane writes in and says, Hi, Mike. I'm Jane from New York City. And I've listened to your podcast while walking to and from work. Five mile round trip, the bonus of living in a city. You provide daily inspiration, and I admire your ability to have the time for this podcast, as well as your honesty in revealing your own life story, struggles, your successes with others. I hope your podcast doesn't become too commercial with corporate sponsors. I'd like to raise the issue of perfectionism, which I don't think you've discussed on the air. It's the opposite of complacency, but can lead to the same result, throwing in the towel at the first sign of slipping, and then veering off the plan for a long time, if not forever. Without getting overly psychological about this, anyone who grew up with demanding parents like mine can relate to this. If the response to you getting a 95 on an exam was, well, why not 100, you can understand the perfectionism trap. I'm at Lifetime for the third time, this time since the end of September 2016, eight months and counting, and perfectionism got the best of me after my last two times at goal in 1994 and 2001. If I didn't track for several days or, you know, or didn't exercise the amount I set for myself, I felt like a failure. If I started gaining for whatever reason, I was too ashamed to go back to a meeting on and on. This time around, I've avoided any connect challenges, 30-day, 100-day, etc., and it makes me uncomfortable when people say, I will never again do this or do that. Never is a long time. Acknowledging the behavior for what it is, often just a matter of particular circumstances like illness, family responsibilities, vacation, work schedules, rather than good or bad, and just moving forward is key. If I didn't track for a couple days because I was, wasn't in a Wi-Fi zone and didn't have paper to track, big deal, I just started tracking when I had the tools. I'm sure others face this challenge in their lives. I would appreciate you addressing this topic in future episode of your podcast. Thanks, Jane. Well, Jane, uh, absolutely. You know, perfectionism trap is, is just as deadly and dangerous as the complacency trap. So I kind of hit you, hit your opening paragraph and um, where, you, you know, you said you appreciate the honesty and, and the inf inspiration provided daily. Uh, and then, you know, the part you say you hope the podcast doesn't become too commercial with corporate sponsors. I completely agree with you on that. Um, you know, anything I do on the internet, the, the first time a, an advertisement comes on, I, I hit skip. More often than not, when a commercial comes on, I actually close out what I'm doing and I don't care about whatever I'm looking for. I understand that about my own habits and my own viewing ability on the internet. So I have no, 
Uh, I have no desire to make this show that. I also know I got to balance that with the amount of time, effort, and money that it costs me to run the show. So I, there is a balance there. But I promise you, my pledge to you is that we're not going there. You know, when you start listening to this and you and you're forced to listen to things you don't want to listen to. Uh, then we've gone down the wrong path. The intent of the show is to provide you the help that you need to get you what it is you need and to, to keep in your ear with relevant, on-purpose uh, conversation to keep you going. So that's my pledge to you is I understand exactly what you're asking for and, and my intent is there. Now, Now um, I will say that, you know, obviously, you know, throw it in there, uh, Nokia and I have done some some partnerships and you will see some Nokia stuff soon, but it's not going to take over the podcast. I promise you that. Now, Here's where we go. Um, you know, one of the things you said, you felt like a failure when you gained and you started going into a meeting room. One of the things I liked about that is I remember very specifically that any time I rejoined Weight Watchers of the five times that I had to join, I hoped every single time that I went into the meeting room that I was a different leader. I actually researched pretty heavily to make sure it was a different leader. I had no desire to see a leader who, who I had lost a lot of weight with and then had to go back and see them at a higher weight. So so I was too ashamed, just like you, to go back. So I understand that shame, and I understand what we have there. Um, you talk about, this time around, you avoided con, you know connect challenges, the 30-day, the 100-day. You know, The whole thing about being perfect is we have to understand that you can't be perfect on the plan. You can't be perfect on the plan for the rest of your life. You may be able to be perfect for a day, perfect for a week, uh, it would be, it's going to be extremely impossible to be perfect on the plan for the rest of your life. So the best thing you can do is you can define what being perfect on the plan means. To me, being perfect on the plan is means that I'm never too far away from the root intent of the program. So there are days that I track really well. There are days that I don't track really well. There are days that I get tripped up that I didn't even know were coming but I wake up every single day mindful to the process. And that is what keeps me where I'm at. That's what keeps me at goal uh, because you just can't be perfect. So, so now that I know that, I don't try and be perfect. I try and be mindful. And there's a huge difference between being perfect on the plan and, and being mindful on the plan. Now, you talk about the 30-day challenge, the 100-day challenge. Uh, one of the things I learned throughout my journey is, is what exactly what you said is if there was a 30-day challenge and, and you say, I want to lose 10 pounds in 30 days, well, what happens on day 30 if you're down 9 pounds? You don't want to be disappointed with a 9-pound loss. So I'm like you. I don't set attendance or performance goals in that regard. I don't set goals then when it comes to the scale that I can't control. I can't control what the scale number will say. I can control my actions. I can control my activity. I can control what I eat. I can't control how the scale reacts to all that. So what I focus on is not that I want to lose 10 pounds in 30 days or, or 20 pounds in 100 days or, or I want to be you know this weight before this wedding. What I focus on is when this date comes, 30 days from now, I want to look back and still be following the program. I want to still be mindful to the process. I want to understand that I had some good days along the way and I had some bad days along the way. But more importantly is that I'm still engaged in the process. If you set an attendance goal, if you say, one year from today, I still want to be very mindful to this journey, I want to be working my best at it, whatever my best is per day, that will carry you to goal. So be careful of being the perfectionist. It's just not going to happen. And if you, if, you, if you get in that trap and you say, you know, I can't do this, then you need to pause and say, you know, I actually can do it. And every morning you wake up, you wake up on plan. So thanks for that. Melissa writes in and says, Dear Mr. Daggett, uh, thank you again for your congratulations and kind words yesterday when I met Goal. They meant so much. As you requested, I'm writing to share my story. I am always inspired and educated by your podcast and hope that this can do the same for somebody else. I've lost 40 pounds in 10 weeks and it feels amazing. In the last 10 years, I've joined Weight Watchers five times. I never met goal and always use a distraction or hurdle as an excuse to quit. I vowed this fifth time would be different. I looked at the previous four attempts and learned from them. This time I tracked every bite, no excuses. Now it's second nature. 
I used all the resources available, the tracker, a Craigslist treadmill, old workout videos, existing shopping and meal planning habits, etc. I started slow, but never stopped building on my efforts. The first week I just tracked. The second week I got a Fitbit and started counting steps. After a month of hitting 10,000 steps a day, I started getting up at 5 a.m. to do workout videos. I learned more on the treadmill. Sorry, I leaned more on amazing social support Weight Watchers has to offer. Connect has introduced me to some amazing people. I started with online and coaching. It was extraordinarily helpful to discuss my progress with someone every single week. For the last 10 pounds, I switched to meetings, which have been incredibly inspiring. Being at goal still does not feel real. It finally happened. The message I want your listeners to get from this is to allow your previous experiences and your distractions to motivate you and inspire today's journey. They were not failures, but opportunities to learn. Thank you again for your service to our country, Melissa. Uh, Melissa, congratulations on hitting your goal. Um, 40 pounds in 10 weeks is absolutely incredible. Um, so that is that is focus. You didn't do it by accident. You didn't just wake up accidentally and go, oh, I, 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 you know, I don't know your entire journey. I need to dig into it a little, a little more. But I bet you during those 10 weeks, you were focused. Every decision you made, you balanced against, do I want this or do I want to make goal? Do I want this or do I want to push forward? Do I want to, would I rather have this or would I rather have goal? And when you make those types of decisions, you can have success. You can average one to two pounds per week. You know, that's what I read on Connect. I see that, you know, it says the Weight Watcher member who's following the plan can expect to lose one to two pounds a week if you're following the plan. If you're following the plan even more so, you know, that's that would be, you know, to be 20 pounds in 10 weeks if you're following there. So obviously you had a little more success than that. You may have had some exercise, but regardless, none of that matters. What matters is, is you were clearly focused on why you had to get this done and the how showed itself up and it got it done. So congratulations on hitting goal. Uh, the, the fact that it took you four other attempts to do this is exactly what's going on. You learn from your other four attempts, which means you never gave up and you hit your goal. There is nothing else out there in this journey that compares to hitting goal. We don't set up on this plan and hope to get close to goal. We, we don't really want to start this journey and just hope to lose some weight. For many of us, the only way to solve our why is to get to goal. And, and as you see all the time, goal is the goal. So that's what you should be set out for. That's what you should be focused on. And until you get there, you need to continue persevering. You need to continue working and learning every single day. I love the fact that a month after you're hitting 10,000 steps a day, you, you started getting up at 5 a.m. to do your workout videos. At some point, you realized that the only way you could work out was to make sure that you got it in to start your day. And that's exactly how I started with the 5 a.m. club. Is that was the only time in my day where I didn't have something scheduled. Now I'm able to work it in. I still call it the 5 a.m. club because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Absolutely. So, so, But you're up every morning at 5 o'clock getting your workout done. That is absolutely key to your progress is because you started slow and just kept building on your efforts. So I'm, I'm very glad to see that you switched to a meeting room and you got to experience that meeting room environment because the meetings are incredibly inspiring. You know, you can do this online. We talked about that more than once. There's no difference in the program. But the meeting room provides something you just can't get from the online community. So I'm glad you got the opportunity to experience that. Now, when you talk about being at goal and it doesn't, feel, doesn't really feel real, that is powerful, right? And so what, what I mean by that is, is, is you're at a place where you've never been. So, so for, for many of us, we've lived overweight for so long, we have no idea what a goal weight is. We have no idea what our goal feeling is. So that's what stops many of us from getting there is that we just don't fully recognize the new body that we're building for ourselves. So you're there, you're at your goal weight, you're at the point where you hop on the scale, you don't wanna lose any more weight, and now you're trying to figure out who the new you is. I promise you, you will settle in. I promise you that as you continue to track continue to live this healthy lifestyle that you built in this beautiful body that you've built for yourself, at some point, 
You'll never forget the journey, but at some point you will forget those feelings of overweight and, and the shame and the embarrassment, and they all get replaced with pride and motivation and energy. And those new feelings will take over your life. And then what will happen is, is as we all do, there will be parts of this journey where you kind of, you will revert temporarily back to an old habit. And at, that's the point where you can recognize it. So you have a ton of energy. You have a lot of pride. You feel really good. You make a day where it wasn't perfect. All of a sudden you recognize that feeling. You feel different. And that slowly reminds you of the old feeling. You can quickly recognize that. And that is why it's so important to get to goal is because when you get to goal, you can recognize the difference between being at goal and being not at goal. When you step on the scale for the very last time in a weight loss mode, it's different. And you you celebrate that and you never drift too far away if you can recognize the difference. So Melissa, congratulations. You're absolutely right. They were not failures for your previous attempts, but opportunities to learn. You learned very well and you got it done. Great, great, great job, Melissa. Proud of you. Last up, uh, Kevin writes in, says, Hi, Dag. So last week I weighed in to find out I gained 1.4 pounds. Having, after having lost every weigh-in, this emotionally set me back. I have such an amazing support system at home from my wife and sister that they told me not to give up, and we went out for walks every day last week. Well, I weighed in today, and I'm down 3 pounds for a total loss of 8.6 pounds. Your podcast, along with my wife's continuing support, has kept me in the game, and I'm looking forward to next week's weigh-in. Kevin. Uh, Kevin, that right there is a game changer. The thing that I love the most in your email is you're looking forward to next week's weigh-in. What I want you to do is I want you to look forward to weigh-in every week, and I don't care what the number is. The weeks that I gained, I was looking forward to weigh-in. Uh, if you look, if you go to fatdag.com, click on the weight loss entry, you'll see every single one of my stickers as I weighed in through Weight Watchers. I, I screen captured every single one of them. There were, I think, two or three times where I had gain weight, a gain for that week. Those weeks, I was excited to weigh in. There was one time, true story, I drove from Atlanta, Georgia to Indianapolis, and I didn't even stop at the house. I went direct from, from Atlanta to Indianapolis to make sure I got to my meeting on time so that I could weigh in, and I gained weight. I could not wait to get on the scale, even though I knew the scale was going to be up, because what that meant to me is that was my grounding. My, my, my attendance goal was I, have to have per, I had to have attendance. I had to be mindful to the process. I had to make sure I never missed a meeting, and I couldn't wait to weigh in. I think that's where you are. I get the sense from your email that you're at the point now where you want to weigh in weekly. You're down 8.6 pounds. That's a phenomenal work. You don't do that by accident. So, sir, keep up the great work. Congratulations on your service in the United States Marine Corps. It's an honor to serve with you. Thank you for what you've done. And let's talk about more celebrations, right? I do want to know what it is you're celebrating. Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on Listen Now. Send in your email at onair at fatdag.com. Send in your questions, your comments, your celebrations. I will certainly work them in as part of the show. But that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight... And getting healthy has absolutely nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Holy cow, did that say 32 minutes? Why don't you guys tell me? That's going to be a long one. The 32 minutes, woo! It gets hot in here sometimes too. All right, I will scroll back up. I see Jana's at the bottom, says come to the Bay Area. Uh, Denise says, so good tonight. Well, thank you. All right, let me, let me drink a water. Ugh. Parched. I'll scroll back up to the middle, and I'll come back to Denise's comment. Water is so, so good. Yeah, Kathy, celebrating not freaking out on a scale. All right, so, man, you guys are awesome. I, I, I have to scroll back a bit up. Kathleen says, marched in place the entire time for 32 minutes. Um, let's see. All right, here we go. So we talked about um, 
Joanne says from Joanne's from Arizona. Sarah says she does not eat her fit po- or her um, her weeklies, and Jeff does. So hopefully, Sarah, you heard that episode. I want you to eat your weeklies. Nicole is here. Hello. Uh, Christine says I try not to eat them, but when I do, I don't feel guilty. Yep, that's the plan. They're there to be eaten. Period. Uh, Nicole ate her today. Good. Wendy's checking in from Florida. Whereabouts in Florida, Wendy? I've been to Florida many times. Um, Linda says, if I have a post, I would like to share it. Can I post it on your Facebook page? Of course. It's very awesome advice. Sure. That's what it's there for. It's This is us. Um, if you put it on Facebook, if you want, you can email it to me. Uh, if it's super duper cool, I'll throw it in the app. Right? I have an opportunity in the app to share text post in the app. So I have not, I think I've done it once or twice, but if you want to, maybe we'll try it, Linda. Who knows? Uh, Diane says, does not usually eat her weeklies. Uh, Brenda is the bestest leader ever. Woohoo! Yay, Brenda. Um, Terry says, great advice on accepting compliments. Cool, very cool. Margaret says, happy Wednesday. Yeah, Terry, where are we? We had 40 at one point. That's pretty cool, right? Sorry. That's where you get live video. My nose itches. Steven's here. Uh, Debbie's here. Steve says, better to focus on habits and working the plan than to lose so many pounds by such and such a day. That's exactly it. Uh, the Yep, the weight will come off faster. So that's, you know, exactly. You know, if you focus on all the right habits, the weight will, not only will the weight come off faster, it'll stay off because you built habits. And habits is what works this program. Uh, the bad habits is what got us in this process. And the good habits will take it back off. Uh, Rebecca says she eats a few weeklies every day generally, uh, went from 52 points to 36 points from nursing exclusively to non-nursing exclusively. So I bet it was a huge change. So, uh, you can get there, you can keep working it and then slowly just kind of, uh, stay in the, in the routine. You're, you're doing great work, Rebecca. Um, and so the fact that you're eating your weeklies, which is what the topic was, is, is great. Um... Let's see, 40 pounds in 10 weeks, that is incredible. Uh, yeah, I don't know what, they didn't say what the starting weight was, but uh, but still, nonetheless, very, very cool. Uh, Jeanette says, you feel like you're a personal coach for all of you. You're, you know, that's kind of kind of how I feel, kind of. I, I have no desire to be a personal coach. I'll, I'll share that with you right now. Uh, because the thing about, for me, uh, the thing about a personal coach is, um this you have to want this more than I want this for you. So I think a lot of times a personal coach can provide a little bit of insight, but if, if you don't have the fire inside to get it done, there's nothing I can say or do to motivate you. So the fact that all of you are still here listening, that means you have the fire inside, it's burning inside, and, and you're trying to, to channel the energy, and that's that's good. Uh, but the, the personal coaching part of it, um, I just don't feel like that would be an area where I would be good at one-on-one. I'd rather kind of just throw some generic stuff out here like I do, and then you internalize it. You figure out how that relates to your own journey. Um, so so I consider it a, a not only a personal coach, it's a personal, uh, it's a public coach, I guess. How's that? Uh, Steven always says, goal is a goal, and I saw that. I worked that into the show. I hope you heard that, Steve, when I did it. Um, Janice, uh, from California. Hello. Yeah. Never, ever, ever, ever give up. That's what, that's what we're talking about. So if you never quit, you're, you know, then you never have to restart. Um, there we go. And so Diane says that is your focus to get to goal. I'm telling you when you get to goal, it's crazy fun, crazy, crazy fun. Janice says, hi. Uh, Janice says, come to the Bay Area. Sure. When? Uh, Denise says, good night. Kathy says, celebrating, not freaking about a, out about a gain on the scale. We saw that at the very end. Uh, you're right. So the scale is going to have a gain. Uh, go look at, go to, go to fatdag.com. Click on, um, let me look at it. I don't even know where it is now. I don't get there that often. But it's like, um, let me see here. Sorry. So you go to fatdag.com, you click on the fat dag menu, you go to weight loss, and it shows you, you scroll down. 
So let's see. Um, I gained um, a couple weeks in here. I guess I had gains. Excuse me. Uh, plus one point six was here. I had a plus one point six one week. I had a plus two point eight is in here. And I thought there was another one. Yeah, another 1.6. So those times that I gained, um, uh, again, I was just like I said in the episode, I was excited to get on the scale because if you look, more importantly, if you go to fatdag.com, you click on the weight loss tab, you look at those entries, look at them, I didn't miss a weigh-in. And if you see on the bottom, it says, you know, caramel, 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 that's the story I weigh in and. Uh, this one here was in Alabama. This one here was in Savannah, Georgia. I didn't miss a meeting. Uh, that's what got me to go, is I, is I was focused on not missing a meeting. So that's where you can go. Uh, you can get it done. It's their attendance goal. Yeah, so Kathleen marched in place. Uh, good work. Yeah, so Jeanette says, thank you for being so faithful to be live every night. Um, you look forward to the encouragement. I recently listened to your podcast about you giving up soda, water, and iced tea is good. Yeah, I don't even very drink much iced tea either. It's, uh, it's almost 99% water. Uh, and so, you know, I do this live every night. Here we are. We're coming up on midnight. The live show certainly adds, you know, about an hour because, you know, I have 20 minutes before the show and then whatever we take after the show where I stand here and, and do that. Um, and then I still have to go over there and send the episode to the server. So that's going to take me another 30, 40 minutes. Um, but I'm honored to be in a position where I can do it. Uh, when I, when I got to the point where, when I started this journey again, even though I had the meeting room, I had a great leader, I still kind of felt alone. Uh, when I had, even though that I had great support and connect, I still kind of felt alone there was a long process in the journey where, um, where the first part of this journey for me, uh, I was just kind of just doing the same thing I'd done every single time. I didn't have enough of the information to know that this particular time was different. So um, I, I say it all the time, and I'm sorry if I just continue to, to beat this dead horse, but um, the Connect community completely saved my life. And... Um, it really, you know, I, I just don't know where where it would be at this point. And so it, it takes me a second to get through this because it's so powerful. And, and my why was so strong. And um, I knew that I needed to get this done. And I tried so many times and I failed so many times that when I started this time, I really didn't truly know that I was going to get here. Uh, I had a handful of people on Connect. You know, I think we started with eight to ten thousand followers, which was just blew my mind that eight thousand people would be interested in what I had to say. And I slowly started working this journey to please the folks on Connect. There was a little bit of time when I kind of was was trying to gear my post towards trying to please the people on Connect. I started getting a little bit derailed, and then I focused back on my journey, and the followership kind of grew because I focused back on me. Uh, but you are always, always there for me. And so uh, this is a long answer to your question, but Jeanette, but um, so what I understand is that the reason that I got to goal was because I had people who I could follow on Connect. I could see that what I was trying to do was possible, and I had constant encouragement along the way. So if there's anybody out there who wants to make goal more than anything in the world, they can, get, they can get there. They just need to know that it's possible. And so I feel compelled to make sure that this message is out there for anybody who needs to hear it so that you can experience what it's like to hop on the scale for the very last time in a weight loss mode because it absolutely, 100% is possible for every single one of us. So, so here we are, we're going to add, you know, I'm going to add an hour to my night, I'm going to get this done, but, but I want to do that. And I'm so honored and such in a place where I'm, I'm at goal, I'm happy. Uh, and, um, it, it gives me no greater joy than to let you know that you can do this. So I do it because I want you to join me at goal. That's the only reason I do it. So, so how you can thank me is by getting to goal. That's, that's it. So every time you email in and say, I made it to goal and your podcast helped, uh, that is why I'll stay up till midnight getting a podcast done.
because uh, because I know it works, and I know that um, and it's one of my greatest struggles right now. The greatest struggle I have is is man. I, <laughs> I know that, in all honesty, this could be a live 24-hour cable news network. That's how much focus we need in our lives. You know, if I had CNN dollars or Fox News dollars, this this wise advice would be a 24-hour seven, 24/7 cable show, and we would stop. We would talk nonstop about this journey. And at any time you needed it, you could just flip on the news channel, and there I am, talking away, and you could get plugged in long enough. So that's not going to happen, right? We don't have the ability to do that. So therefore, the next best thing is we try and do an hour a day. I can't make it on every single day. That just becomes difficult. Um, so you can obviously do some replays, which is helpful. But, it, but I know the journey takes so much focus that, um, that I want to provide as much opportunity as I can to get you focused. So long ramble to your question, Jeanette, but, uh, but thank you. Uh, Marianne's asking Stephen if he's his weeklies. I think we know the answer to that. Um, Diane says, first weigh in from vacation, only one pound gain, but could not wait to go. That's that's the key. Uh, Jeff says their mindset is such a key for this journey. Is What we're doing in the mind is way more powerful. Um, Stephen got 20,000 steps in the 11 p.m. club. There's no such thing as the 11 p.m. club, Stephen. It's the 5 a.m. club because it's 5 a.m. somewhere. So it's the 5 a.m. club. That's it. So every, no matter what time you work out, if you do any sort of activity, it's the 5 a.m. club. It feels powerful to say you're in the 5 a.m. club. Even if it is 11 p.m. your time, you're still in the 5 a.m. club. I'm maintaining that, and we're going with that. Um, and so Christine says you'll have to listen, re-listen because it was late and you, you were late. Don't be late. And you don't eat your weeklies. Uh, you need to eat your weeklies. Yes, eat your weeklies. Um, you know, and, and so Christine, I'll rephrase, rephrase real quick. You eat them, but you don't go eat a bag of M&Ms because you have weeklies. You know, be smart with them. Use them for what they are. Some weeks you'll eat them. Some weeks you won't eat them. But they're there to be used as part of your journey, and you figure out what it is. So, very cool. Nicole says, show us your desk. Uh, what do you mean? It's that one? That's my desk? Um, so Helen says, because of me, I've lost... Uh, because of you, I've lost almost 50 pounds. You reminded me to stay focused. Thanks for all of your podcasts. Now, Helen, it wasn't because of me that you lost 50 pounds. You lost 50 pounds because you wanted to lose 50 pounds. You lost 50 pounds because you found tools that helped you stay mindful and helped you remember that you wanted to lose 50 pounds. You didn't lose 50 pounds because I wanted you to do it. You didn't lose 50 pounds because I asked you to. You didn't lose 50 pounds because I told you to. You didn't lose 50 pounds because I did a podcast. I do a podcast every single day, and there's people who aren't losing weight. They're not tuned into it. They're not listening. They're not following the program. So you didn't lose 50 pounds because of me. You lost 50 pounds because of you and your focus and your discipline, and congratulations. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, so my, what does my wife do while I'm doing the recording? She unfortunately has to hear it live, and so she's upstairs uh, probably with her ears plugged so, yeah. Has she ever made a cameo? I don't believe so. Uh, someone emailed me today and asked. They said they wanted to have some uh, questions about yeah, what my wife's reaction to me being on the plan was. And I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Very, very cool. Uh, Kathleen says, thanks. Ate all your weeklies and then some this week. So my fit points got me back to zero from a negative weeklies balance. Way in tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, no, there's no we'll see about it, Kathleen. So that you're, that's exactly how you work the plan. If you continue that process, you will be just fine. So whatever the scale says, you're working the plan properly. You will have better weeks than others, so keep up the great work. Um, Helen says, hope you'll listen live beginning tomorrow. Uh, yes, Denise, late night, late night. And Katie, you want that feeling? Go get it. It's there to be... The cool thing is, Katie, is one of the best things there's about reaching goal is that um, it's not a one-person prize. You know, it's not a winner-take-all. Uh, everybody can win this game. You know, so you don't need to get upset when somebody makes goal. You don't need to be jealous of someone else who makes goal. You don't need to be envious of them. You need to join them. It's not a winner-take-all event, right? You can ha We can have multiple winners on this journey. Uh, and so join me for sure. Go get it. Uh, Jaina says the exact same thing. 
Uh, Kathleen's going to thank me in 2017. Yes, you, you can do it. Christine, 24 to goal. That's very cool. 24 is doable. Uh, if you've lost any weight at this point, you can lose the last 24. Um, I love, I mean, I love this, this segment right now is really making me, making me happy. So Adriana says, I can't wait to get the goal. And then lifetime, it will in all caps, it will happen. Thank you for all you do. You're very welcome. Good thing that didn't go off during the podcast. That would have been fun. Um, so Kathy says, that's what the podcast is on the app. Hmm. Not sure what that means. Kathy, sorry. Uh, Marianne says, thank you and good night. Uh, Adriana, I refuse to miss a meeting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not good at jokes, I guess, Mariana. I'm sorry. Um, yes, if you swim at 6 p.m., you're in the 5 a.m. club. Everybody who does any activity, anytime, anyplace, anywhere, you're in the 5 a.m. club. Now, one of the things early on uh, that what's kind of fun is look up when you're at 6 p.m., look up and see where it's 5 a.m. in the world. So so I used to post and say, you know, when I did a, a you know an afternoon workout, I would say, hey, I'm doing my workout from China. Let's see, because it's 5 a.m. in China. So I would look up to see where it was 5 a.m. when I did my p.m. workouts. But the 5 a.m. club means that your workout, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? So absolutely use the 5 a.m. club hashtag. You're going to read about that later, um, about that. There's an article coming in that, you're going to, that I'm going to share with you that talks about the 5 a.m. club. So very, very, very cool. Um, so Katie, it's not elusive. No. Yes. <laughs> Christine. Okay, here we go, Christine. Uh, 119 pounds so far, which is absolutely incredible. Um, you, you don't do that by accident. It's focus, it's discipline, it's dedication. You, you did it. So to get the last 24, you know how you lose the last 24 pounds? The same way you lost the first 119. You track the exact same way. Uh, the, the piece you got to worry about is that you are so close to goal that, that you potentially, um, maybe not you, but, but generally speaking, when we get this close to goal, our tracking isn't as good as it was to get the first part of our journey done. So we'll sneak in a couple extra potato chips. We'll sneak in, you know, a little bit bigger sandwich. We'll work out a little less. We maybe, maybe miss a meeting. Uh, and that's why people think we slow down when we get closer to goal is that we actually work less. So we're not working the plan the same way towards the end as we are. Go to, again, point you back there. Go to fatdag.com. Look at my last, let me see, my last uh, two-way entries before I made goal was um, a minus 5.4 and a minus 4.4 were my last two way entries to goal. So that's how bad I wanted it. You know, I did not, uh, I didn't coast into goal. I tracked like a track star to get me to goal uh, the last two weeks. So, so good job, Christine, for sure. Uh, all right, cool. Looks like we made it all the way to the bottom. Woo! Long episode tonight. That's fun. Um, and I, Denise says, I hope your cousin Terry is still on listening to this. I hope so, too. I hope everyone does. Um, yeah, so so close to goal. Very, very, yeah. So, so Christine, um, fighting complacency, right? So do you notice the difference? Um, do you notice the difference between your, your tracking now than when it was six months ago? Yep, Terry is still here. So, so if you notice the difference, then just focus on getting back to where you were and say, I'm telling you the best part of the journey is the last 20 pounds, the last 15 pounds. The piece when you are pushing beyond where you ever thought was possible changes your life completely. 100% changes your life. So, um, Stephen is quoting the fact that studies have shown that people who eat weeklies uh, keep the weight off longer. I believe it. You know, I don't know that to be true or not true, but I, I believe it. And I'm not, I don't, I don't not believe it enough to go to dis, dispute it. So I agree. I will endorse that statement. Um, so cool. All right. So that's going to do it. Looks like we're done. Um, thank you for being here as always. We're obviously it's late. It's now Thursday on the East Coast. So um, uh, once again, I'm going to go to bed before I even wake up for the day. So I start every day going to bed, and I end every day by waking up. So, um, so I will. Does it make sense? I will go to bed today before I wake up for the day. So, honored to do it. Glad to be here. 
um, you know, you've, you've got to know um, more than anything, you've got to know this is possible, right? That's the one piece more than anything that I'll leave you with is you've got to focus on what drove you to start this journey. What is driving you to stick with it? Something drove you to join Weight Watchers and you see that other people who've been driven to join Weight Watchers can have success. Those who stay focused, those who stay disciplined, those who follow the plan get the success. It doesn't take long to see that and it doesn't take long for you to understand that I believe that you can do this. I know you can do it. It's time for you to know you can do it and it's time to get it done. So remember the journey, it's, it's a long journey. It's a, it's a journey for the rest of your life. Uh, stay focused on what it is you're doing. Uh, you know, it absolutely takes focus and determination. It has nothing to do with luck. Stay, stay focused and uh, more than anything, I wish you the best of focus. Have a good night.